to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. morning god bless you sir and my honor and joy to and blessings also to every man of god we had a brief session yesterday it was such a rich and warm time with a few of the men of god and just a time of sharing together and prayer the bible says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity hallelujah there are certain things that cannot be done by only one person, no matter how aligned, no matter how consistent. It would take the various members of the body of Christ together to um, drive the purposes of God. So we thank God for the privilege and the honor that he's given us to serve him. And um, I want to salute everyone for making the sacrifice to be here this morning. I can only imagine the things that you had to sacrifice to be here one guarantees that you will not be disappointed in the name of jesus christ father help us this morning we submit to your wisdom and we pray that christ will be revealed to us this morning as the wisdom of god and as the power of god we thank you let our lives change you will anoint us afresh and to jesus be all the glory in Jesus name please be seated God bless you we'll quickly finish up our discussion yesterday and then we'll have some time to pray um, I began a teaching yesterday on the journey of faith the goal of the teaching was to help us understand the principles that help us maximize our faith adventure and we began from Romans 15 and verse 4. The Bible says that whatsoever things are written aforetime, it says they are for our learning. So media, we walk together again like we did yesterday so that we can make progress. The things that are written aforetime, he said, Romans 15, 4, they are for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. And I did tell us yesterday that history, God captures history so that we can learn. Hidden in history are secrets and keys and precepts that connect to the future. That this is also the reason why you find the Bible meticulously listing details and events about people's lives. Are we together? We examined a few characters in scripture that the Bible goes as far as digging into their foundations from grandparents to parents, their childhood, their mistakes, and up to the point where they rose. And some of them, unfortunately, did not end well. Some of them ended exceptionally. And the Bible captured all and left it for us. And here Paul is teaching us that the purpose of all those details, that history, contains within it keys that if you can study history you will be able to gain the wisdom that provides guidance for the future hallelujah 
And then Hebrews 6 and verse 12 says, To not be slothful, but to be followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. That means the way God reveals his ways is to personify different dimensions of himself that he wants to be studied in and through men and then refer you to those men that as you study them you will learn attributes about God are we together a man can so walk with God that he will capture a dimension of God in a rich and unusual way that individual as a gift for walking with God he becomes God's referral point as far as you want to learn that dimension of God so when you want to know what it means to be blessed in the kingdom and not to be confused with the world's idea of blessing the, the Lord himself through scripture will lead you to the man Abraham Abraham is God's portrait of what it means to be blessed that means if you are blessed and you do not look like Abraham it was not God's blessing he said look unto Abraham your father and to your and to Sarah your mother that bore you Psalm 51 he says for I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him so when you want to know how God calls people alone blesses them and increases them look unto Abraham if you want to study what it means to be favored in the kingdom then you go to this personality called Esther you have to study how a village girl was raised from Shushan and then becomes queen over 127 provinces. And without using a sword, she brings justice and the purposes of God, even defeating Haman and all his plots. And there was no trace of her fighting. Now you study her to understand how an individual can rise and win through favor. Are you following now? He says, follow them who through faith and patience. When you want to study how to restore the ordinances of God across a territory that has been plagued by decadence, you would have to study the man Elijah. That he was a man who came, the Bible says, Elijah the Tishbite. We don't have the opportunity to study about his childhood and the rest, but we know that he came not just as a prophet, but as a preserver of righteousness. When you want to study what it means to walk with God, to walk with God genuinely, there are two personalities recommended in the Bible. Number one, Enoch. Number two, Jacob. You study these individuals to know what it means to walk with God. Are we still following? Follow them who through faith and patience. So when you celebrate those who are going ahead of you, it's not human worship. You are celebrating a testament of walking meticulously with God to a point that your life now personifies something that God can recommend. He can refer. That means if you read your Bible and you do not understand certain things, God can say, look unto this man. You know you are doing well when your life becomes a platform for spiritual referral. That God can wake somebody in the dream and say, study this fellowship as the portrait of what it means to walk in my will. Study this man. Study this woman. Hallelujah. Having been mentored by Jesus for a period of three and a half years, they were bold enough to tell the man at Get Beautiful. He said, look on us. Don't just look on God alone we dare you look on us we have been taught we have been mentored if you look on to god you are blessed but if you look on to us you are also blessed a man can say look on us and yet not deceive people that you can grow to walk with god and understand the ways of god you can tell a generation look on us the bible says he looked at them steadfastly expecting to receive something Then we discuss that there are three major seasons as far as the faith adventure of a believer is concerned. There are three major seasons that every believer must pass through in order to emerge a sign and a wonder and to be able to do much for God within the frame of your lifetime. Number one, we stated that the first season is the season of preparation. The first season 
is the season of preparation and there are five things that must be captured within your season of preparation if you miss that season you may never be able to maximize destiny number one you must discover and you must know God but the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits John 17 and 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength let the rich man not glory in his riches the Bible says but let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that the pride of the believer is not in acquisition of things but the knowledge of God number two you must know and discover yourself it is only through the lens of the knowledge of God that you will find out who you are remember our teaching yesterday if you do not know who you are the world you are about to confront will bully you spiritually emotionally it is important for you to know who you are we examine the life of Gideon a man who God called a mighty man of valor but he was hiding and running away every time God called men among the many things that happened to them was a rediscovery of themselves John 1 verse 6 there was a man sent from God remember our statement yesterday that you mentioned your name and you said I am sent not I was sent from God you have to understand if you don't know where you come from then you don't know what advantage you have when it was time for David to go and fight Goliath they brought the young boy to Saul and Saul looked at him and said you're a young boy we can't do this evil against you and your family and he said no let me give you my credentials once upon a time I was in the wilderness I fought the lion and the bear and among the many questions Saul asked him he said whose son are you I need to know where you come from so I know the advantage that is around your life when you know where you come from then you know the advantage that is captured in your life he says he that cometh from above is above all one more time say I am sent, I am sent. from God whether you are Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, um, South, South, you are somewhere in, across and around the world. The most important thing is that you come from above. You are above the system and you are above the limitations. Number three, you must discover your giftings and your abilities. It is very important to discover your giftings and your abilities. These are the tools that will be used for your exploits. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2. Moses, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, a rod. An ordinary rod. What do you have? He said, a rod. And then I told you that the first thing the Lord asked him to do with that rod is throw that rod before my presence. The rod in your hand becomes a rod for signs and wonders to the degree to which that rod serves Jesus. If your rod cannot bow down and serve the purposes of the kingdom, it cannot be converted to the rod that makes for signs and wonders. By the time we get to verse 17 of Exodus 4, it says, this rod in your hand wherewith you shall do signs. It was an ordinary rod, but since you could sacrifice it and throw it down at my presence, when you serve the Lord with your giftings, when you serve the Lord with all you have, it now becomes a rod that can produce signs and wonders. Do not start your faith adventure until you know the rod that you have in your hand. Singing, preaching, leadership, everything that constitutes an advantage in your life will be used for destiny actualization. Don't select some and leave some every investment of God in your life God is not a waster remember the event of the five loaf and two fish already taught us that God does not waste even the crumbs he said gather it that means there is nothing God gave you that will not be used except you do not refine and make it available your singing your leadership your looks your whatever it is your strength anything God gave you you must coordinate those spiritual mental and physical resources together 
and hand them over and say, Lord, these are the tools. I hold them as rods in my hand. Because when you stand before the Red Sea, it will not be a time of discussion. It's the rod that you have. Are we together? And then number four, you must find your place in destiny. You must discover or receive your assignment. Assignments and callings are discovered and received. If you are David, going to feed your brothers will be the pathway to discovering your place in destiny. If you are Jeremiah, it will come to you by revelation. That while you were in your mother's womb, even before you came out, you had been called and ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Are we together now? Whether it is through discovery or through revelation, you must get to a point where you find your place in life. He says, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will. Your relevance is in your assignment. Your honor is in your assignment. Your reward is in your assignment. If you lose your assignment, you have also lost the platform for your reward and your relevance. And then number five, the fifth thing you do in this season of preparation is to build capacity and to prepare. Hallelujah. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There is timing to preparation. I must walk the works of him that sent me, says, while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk again. You don't have all the time the earlier you prepare, the more efficient you will be in time and destiny. Hallelujah. Jesus took 18 years out of the 33 years of his life for preparation. Can you imagine that? 18 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years until today, that ministry still speaks. The disciples, look at the ratio of training to impartation. Like I said yesterday, three and a half years to one night of encounter. So in God's mind, he knows how serious you are with your destiny to the degree to which you are intentional about preparation. And I've told you, preparation is not limited to spiritual preparation alone. Capacity building. Because the oil on your life will always assume the size of the vessel carrying it. If your mindset is small, the oil will look small. The prophet said, I know what is wrong with you. It is not the potential of the oil. Go and borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. And she enlarged her capacity and the oil started following that capacity. There are many people you can receive, even if it is the greatest man of God on earth, you receive his anointing, it will become small in your life because there is no capacity to give it expression. Hallelujah. You must focus and you must prepare. Did the Bible not say there is no man intending to build a house who will first sit down and count the cost, whether he has what it takes to finish because better is the end of a thing thereof than the beginning. Most people do not prepare enough. You've heard me say this, when a student scores 30%, he didn't get zero, but he still failed. If a student scores 35%, he didn't get zero, but he still failed. If you bring the student who did not write the exam and the one who got zero and the one who got 10 and the one who got 25 and the one who got 39, all of them scored F. They will still stand in one category. So both the person who did not come for the exam and the person who came sincerely but failed will receive the same reward. It is dangerous to be ill prepared. The reward of a failure and the reward of a Ill, an ill prepared person is the same. You have to contend for knowledge. You have to learn, expand, ask the Lord, what are the various things you will be doing in and through my life? And then you have to submit yourself to learning everything that will be required for your efficiency. At age 12, Jesus was already at the temple learning. When Satan came to him, he did not say, I wish. He did not say, I know. He did not say, I assume. He said, it is written the season of preparation these are the five things that must be captured and i did tell you yesterday there is no great man in the kingdom raised and made by god that will jump this season 
in fact in truth there is no great man in life and destiny who will be great sustainably without a track record of honoring this season of preparation that leads to the next season which is the season of testing and proving hmm. this is a very very it is one of the most difficult seasons in a great man's life in your faith adventure listen carefully your journey of faith i told you the moment your walk with god begins to insult your sense of self-worth no you have switched a season because the assignment of the season of preparation is to purify and to prune you it's not to give you skill it's to purify you now that you have done well building skill and the rest god will need to work on your heart condition god will need to purify your motive that is the assignment of the season of testing and proving god will give you instructions that will insult your pedigree god will put you in situations that will make you feel less of a person however if you are able to love him more than your ego to love him more than your reputation then you are ready for a life that excels. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's begin our reading from verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We'll begin our reading from verse 13. Is God speaking to someone already? My screen there is not to let me just pull it from here okay it's, it's, it's clear I can manage let's start from verse 11 it says beware 11 starts with a caution Deuteronomy 8 verse 11 everybody say beware, beware. the assignment of the season of testing and pruning is to bring you to this state beware that thou forget not the lord thy god in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which i command you this day we're reading down to 18 less when thou hast eaten you see that something really happens to men when they eat and are full look at the the story of five loaves and two bread as long as they were hungry they listened so we don't know how sure god cannot be so sure that you will stay with him until he watches your reaction when you are eaten and you are full never trust a man until he has eaten and is full then watch the reaction there is loyalty with hunger the moment you do not have exposure you don't have platforms you don't have whatever we can't really trust your prayer and fasting and your diligence. Let us watch what happens when you eat and are full. The moment they ate bread and were full, they started throwing it on the ground. They did not say thank you. They got up and walked away. And Jesus said, gather the crumbs. Don't mind them. Just gather the crumbs. And they came and said, we'll make you king. Do this thing for us again. When he refused to do it a few, maybe weeks or months later, they said, crucify him. Forget about what we said before. Crucify him. He looked at them. They looked at him. I ate your bread. Still die. Crucified him. Less when thou hast eaten and are full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. 13. Hmm. And when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and your gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied here is the effect this is what the season of pruning the season of testing does then your heart be lifted up and thou forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth from the land of egypt from the house of bondage 15 who led you through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16 i want you to read 16 if you're a christian if you can see it loud and clear ready one to read who fed thee in the wilderness with manna 
which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee and that he might prove thee why to do thee good at thy latter end that he might humble thee and prove thee many people fail during their seasons of test many people fail during their seasons of proving we'll finish this first many of you right now the reason why you are skilled you are gifted you have many things you are prepared and yet you are shocked that there is no demand upon your grace is you have jumped one more season it's not from preparation to the third god will return you back and say you have not yet been approved he says paul a man approved not a man taught not a man skilled approved hallelujah let's finish the scripture deuteronomy chapter 8 now verse verse 17 it says and thou say in thy heart my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth and then verse 18 is our final verse but thou shalt remember the lord thy god there is something that competence and excellence and an, an awareness that you are good it does something to you it can erode the need for help you may not need god again after all i can sing after all i can preach after all i know all the scripture after all the other day i prophesied and it was right he says beware god must pass you through seasons that prune and purify your heart so god will start giving you instructions like empty your bank account just when the money you are waiting for enters he will never tell you when nothing has entered and you say god you would have told me this last week is it that i didn't hear well i'm i'm waiting till the one and not the one they dashed you the one you worked for abraham it's true that i began by telling you you have a great destiny but take now thy son thy son whom thou lovest and offer him upon a bond offering in a mount that i will show you ah god you called me to just kill my future look unto abraham your father and to sarah your mother that bore you for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him if you are truly the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham the journey of faith the bible says abraham rose up early in the morning genesis 22 that the lord came to him i'm sure you know abraham was used to god talking to him and appearing so god came that morning and i'm sure abraham was so what blessing is it that you forgot something you're about to tell me something new and he said this time around abraham we are ready for greatness we are ready to make genesis 12 become a reality because genesis 12 was prophecy it was not yet a reality i will if you satisfy the condition take now thy son take now thy gift take now your honor take now the the epicenter of your pride that which gives you confidence whom thou lovest don't take the one you don't love take the one you are connected to and get thee into the land of moria and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains that i will tell you may you do verse 3 give us verse 3 please the bible says and abraham rose up early there is timing with god delayed disobedience you've heard it delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure he rose up early in the morning do you know what it means for abraham to get up in the morning where are you going to kill my son why he said so are you sure i had him but this is your future do you know what it means to wait for over 25 years and have a son arrive and then now he says to kill him so why did you bring him then why didn't you just take him since he was with you why do you give me something and still take it back every time god demands what he gave you 
is because he wants to do something with it not because he wants to take it there is something he wants to add and increase look let me tell you god does not reduce men god does not reduce men god will touch every aspect of your life every with no reservation take now thy son can i tell you this is a very strange season in the life of champions because not even them will have the liberty to understand what is happening it is at hindsight that they will look back and say oh so this is what god was trying to do beware of judging people because you don't know what season they are in some things that may carry a semblance of failure is the making of destiny are we together now yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me the first question is why should i be there when you are with me i thought your being with me should make me not to go there Whoever told you that the presence of God sometimes automatically creates immunity against some of these things. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Since I'm walking and you are with me, that means we are walking together. I thought you should take me out of that situation. Why are you taking me in? He says, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I've not seen a way of escape, but I am sure you are there. There are times that the storm may not cease. Just verify whether Jesus is still in the boat. Even if he's sleeping, know that he is there. Hmm. Let me tell you this. Especially if God is calling you to this end time ministry. Don't you think all it takes is a little Bible study, graduation, and an impartation, and there you go. No, not with God. There are seasons that will stretch you, my dear people. There are seasons where you will pray and not receive answers for your own life. And yet another person comes and you prefer solutions. You are there with no money. And God says, teach on wealth and abundance as a pastor. And you stand there and you bring revelations that you yourself have never studied. And at the end of it, somebody just receives a supernatural alert while you are teaching. And you go back and say, God, how about me? Listen, you must learn to live in the silence of God. The silence of God is a powerful mystery. When God is silent, know what he's saying. Because the silence of God is a language. <laughs> ah. The silence of God how many pastors may not have their own children and yet you find them praying for someone and twins triplets and they go back and say but God if I've done something wrong I'm sorry do you know how Abraham would have felt seeing all his kinsmen and all the people dedicating all their children and then returning back home and Sarah says when when will this happen and Abraham says, well, we give God praise. One day we know. He's told me that I will be the father of nations. And I rest my case. Let me tell you this. Every time you do not understand your situation, verify whether God is there. If he's there, find rest. Your fear should be if God is not with you. Once you are sure that God is with you, I want you to find rest. You can fail alone. But you and God cannot fail together. He is that powerful. I know a man of God who for many years, this man would not have breakthrough in ministry. Very honest, sincere, godly man. Many years ago, I remember the man coming to pray with me. And then, you know, we're just starting out. And the man said, what is wrong? Am I doing something wrong? I told him, I said, don't worry. Do you know, after many years, the man was praying and then the lord told him he said his destiny was not in this nation one thing led to the other the lord relocated him and right now he's doing marvelously well for the kingdom last time i spoke with him he told me surprisingly that he has over two or four churches in dubai 
and then about six or so in Ghana do you know do you know the first crusade that we had the first crusade that we had the total number of people that were on that crusade ground I'm not sure they were up to 50 crusade that we prayed and fasted fasted as if we would die transported ourselves on my way going for that crusade there was nothing in our pocket it was one car our ladies the initial ladies that were in the ministry at that time believe me they had to look for firewood to break wood some of them from trees everybody was in every department how many were we everybody was in prayer department everybody was in welfare just help wherever help is needed let me tell you sincerely if you looked at me then you may say ah this man may not go far the season of testing and pruning when that crusade was over i was owing money for sound and yet the sound people were on the crusade ground hearing me shout about what god can do they saw miracles do you know what it means to be owing somebody and yet you are there you are the man of god they sang songs you came on stage and then the strange thing is they were seeing miracles those times people were few and most of them were old women and you know those people don't lie if they are not healed they are not healed though it's not like young people who will pity you for the sake of your future and say this when we called for praying for the sick almost everybody came out you pray for them you pray for them is there anything that say no i'm not i'm still feeling that pain all, all over me when we were done with that meeting the money to transport my dear people back to zaria was not even there we had to negotiate with the transport company the people there i told them i said please just take them i assure you that by the time you are getting there somebody will be waiting with your money the journey of faith and that was how we agreed they negotiated they said whatever if we get there and there's nothing whatever happens to you no problem just go and they left transport there's no money hoping that six or seven hours later when they arrive there will be money waiting there and it's not like maybe it's a, you know what it means to fill one bus and take people there and some of these people were not christians you know what i'm talking about so they don't care about any your covenant with god is your business i'm sharing this with you to let you know that nobody comes out of nowhere all that nonsense talk of you came out of nowhere is nonsense no no if you are approved by god indeed there must be a track record hallelujah and then i needed to sort the sound people i had to plead with them and say please can you just allow me we just finished this crusade eventually i got twenty thousand somewhere and i gave one of them as a suko and they left i pleaded with them i was waiting and waiting for my scholarship to come so that i'll be able to give them from it it was delayed though something that used to come early it was now delayed i will never forget pleading with someone to say please can you sign me a check let me just complete these people's money i promise you i will give you back he signed the check and i called them from kaduna state they came down to zaria collected the check happily when they went to the bank immediately they told them sorry there's no money in this check they reversed back and they said they were going to call police to go and lock me that guy saw the signs and wonders so he saw the miracles how do where is the god that gives you miracles and cannot help you in another area I'm, I'm helping you so that you will know that there is nothing new to you don't sit down and let the devil make you think your situation is unique there's nothing unique the thing that is is the thing that was are we together my ego was tongue everything was tongue i got to a point in my life when i said lord 
if I go to the police station or go to the cell, let it be at least Paul went there. So let me go, let me go. I'm not the first to be behind bars. I didn't steal, I didn't kill, I didn't destroy. So let me go there honorably because now I don't know what to do. There are many people today who will be offended by God simply because they didn't have the money to buy speaker when they started ministry. Please think again. Think again. Think again. You want God to trust you with resources of nations? It takes a lot. Is someone already learning? I shared with you my story yesterday when they invited me to preach in a church not too far from my house. I prayed and fasted and prepared about an hour or two it, there was heavy downpour of rain and they were waiting for me I went in the rain the rain drenching me I was praying in tongues with joy holding my Bible when I now got there to make matters worse they it was when I got there you know they had closed the door because it was raining had to you know someone had to help me they opened the door for me and then they didn't even keep a seat for me they now had to push some people in front keep a seat and even though they saw me drenched and all of that they were happy they were jumping they acted drama for i don't know how many hours you know they were laughing and then when it was my own turn they now passed with 15 minutes they said please time has gone i should help you know and just see how i can summarize everything and i said my god what is this but i did that with honor a time came when we started we used to have night meetings those times you know i it, believe me when i tell you i remember that night after the meeting we would finish around one or two and start trekking home it was a very it was a relatively long distance i don't know how i don't know anywhere here that i can measure the distance for you one two in the night trekking with joy lord we thank you lord we give you praise I will never remember, forget a sister who I think she later found out that things were really going bad financially. I don't know, maybe one person confided in her and she went to buy rice, buy this and brought it as a seed. I said, no, somebody must have told you. Never for once did I ask anybody to say, oh, remember, I'm your man of God. Can you bring me rice? No. Listen, there are many lessons to learn here because there are many of us who are obsessed with guarantees guarantees you've not started anything a fellowship of two people who will agree with god to be giving me money every week from that fellowship you've not taught you've not raised anybody who is going to pay for my suits who is going to pay for my flight i can't go by road i'm 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 too busy i know all these transport companies so if it's in a chi dan dollars chisco oh no come on don't be carried away by some of this glamour you see let me tell you the truth i'm saying it so that you will understand for some of you you need to settle down and say lord whatever you are doing through my life i may not understand see the anointing was designed to only solve problems that were caused by the enemy if God is the one behind that situation the anointing will not solve it so sometimes some situations that don't live are not necessarily demonic God has found an opportunity he may not have caused it but he may have found an opportunity through it to prune you believe me he will not be in a hurry to take it away I assure you except you don't know God hmm. God can give you a program to fast for one month. Lord, what is, the, what is the prayer point? Just pray in tongues. And at the end of that one month, nothing supernatural will happen. Absolutely nothing will happen. You will not see any vision. You will not see anything. Sometimes you are lying down. You will hear the voice of God. Get up and come outside. You will come outside thinking you will meet an angel. You will not see anything. You will stand for 10 minutes and you say, go back and sleep. What is he doing? Listen, you need to learn this.
Is God helping somebody? When God started helping me and lifting me in ministry, for many years, I did not have a car. For many years, I was staying in one room. It was not because of lack of money. God gave me the instruction to stay there. I was paying two, three bedroom flats for people as a seed, yet I would stay in that same one room. Can you imagine this? God, what are you doing with my life? What is the name of what we are doing? People would bring seeds of cars. And sometimes I would just smile because I already know the answer is no. And truly the answer will be no. I, would, I mean it. I'm not exactly. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. I would pray on it. And the Lord would say, just let them have it. Let me tell you, when Koinonia started, when Koinonia started now, miracle service with crowds of people inside and outside i was using a bike from my house to go for the miracle service the suit i was wearing can buy the bike so it's not luck i would take that bike and you just hear a bike from behind you who are uh, from overflow outside you will just turn and see a man of god what is the people could not understand we came to prosper so I, I wish sure we're in the right place. Please sit down. I know what it means when Paul says death walks in us. That life will walk in you. I remember the time when a, a gentleman out, I think the, the, a woman, she donated her car. To come and pick me when i saw the protocol coming with the car i said what is this for they said a woman i said don't ever do that to anybody it is not lack and insufficiency it is a price for staying with god whatever he says the people i was paying their rent could not understand what is wrong with this man I can't tell you how many times, sometimes I will sit down, maybe praying in my room, and I will just hear choruses, women fellowship. They are coming to greet me and to ask me what is wrong. You know how women just sing and you know, they raise a chorus as they are coming near your house. You just know that you are about to hear stories. Okay, we just wanted to check up on you and I hope everything is all right. Because they are hearing the testimonies of the people whose school fees you are blessing, you are giving. They know it's not luck. What is all this? Ah, listen, you don't know what covenant God has with some people. The, the, it says, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. My altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my worship is calling you oh god my altar is calling you Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, can you love God that far? Can God bless you so much in ministry like that and promote you and then stop you from enjoying the blessing that comes? Will you still love Him? When you say, Lord, I love you, I love you, many of you is the reason why what you say does not carry power because it must be tested. When you see God do certain things for certain people, there is a covenant that has come by reason of history, a track record of death walking in them. Believe me, if God did not allow me to move out of that one room, I probably would still be there till today. It didn't matter the level of growth. Hallelujah.
the season of testing the season of proving all the days of my appointed time i will wait for someone the language for you right now is tarry tarry when will god anoint anoint me and announce me apostle i have raised many people who are going but god has said stay back just obey him and stay just obey him and stay let me tell you there are many ways god will prove you you can be a first class graduate and god will say for the first six years after graduation you will not have a job you just stay it's not that i cannot give you a job that is my template for you and you can get a job that is going to give you even five six hundred thousand and you go to god and god will say no stay and people will come they will call a doctor to check you whether you are fine they will call a psychologist to check you whether you are fine they will carry your picture and pray for you because they are sure something is wrong and yet you can sit down let me tell you the season of proving is not done in groups that is the realm where you stand alone and you prove your love for Jesus that leads you to the third season now we're ready to pray the season of appearance or the season of manifestation that is the third season in every believers journey of faith having been proven by God then you now step into your season of manifestation John chapter 1 and verse 80 John chapter 1 and verse 80 please give it to us so we pray I like you to be very sensitive now this morning is an impartation John chapter 1 and verse 80 will we have it media or do I just stand John chapter 1 and verse 80 80 not 1 8 80 John 1 8 0 okay let, let's just save time let me just pull it up from here John chapter 1 and verse 80 there's a lady who is going to shout right now under the power of God the anointing is coming upon her and the Lord is telling me that he is turning your life you are stepping into huh? Did I say, Luke chapter 1, my apologies. Luke chapter 1 and verse 80. Luke chapter 1. Do I turn it here or? Be, okay, beautiful. The Bible says, and the child grew. Please help me. I just saw a vision. I saw two people just running out by the anointing. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. I just saw the power of God. I'm just seeing a cloud. Just rest two people. Just the anointing resting upon them. And help them you don't have to bring them out just just keep them somewhere there when when it's time to bring them out I'll let you know just two of them I just saw that light and the child grew and worked strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel there is a period of manifestation and there is a period of showing forth who is adekunle adekunle is there someone with such a name you are at the back adekunle is there someone like that you are wearing like is it like an ankara cloth i'm seeing or something with a long hand is there someone like that adekunle run come Now this is not um everybody who is at the Kunle is just coming whether let's not distract this. I'm going to pray for you. so people have come I'll pray for you the Lord is changing listen there are five people I'm seeing you are coming to the end of a season 
and a new season is starting for you i'm seeing i'm seeing the power of god rest upon you right now a season is coming to an end you have been seeing it for some of you in your dreams and even in your visions god has been showing you the season has come and he remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing until his season of appearing help that lady the power of god is coming on this lady wearing sweater this lady in the name of jesus the son of the living god i shift you into that season a new season is opening up help her please gentlemen what do you do are you a leader over a fellowship huh this is what i'm seeing like you, is it a pastor or a leader over a fellowship is, is do we have any mic working help us please Jesus. what huh Yes, because sir. I'm seeing like you're a leader or a pastor over a fellowship. Yes, sir. What fellowship is that? Jesus Christ Evangelical Ministry, sir. Is that true? Is there such a fellowship like that? I no, most times people just think that people just stage manage this thing. Not everybody is fake. Oh. I just told you my story. You think I'm fake? It's God that will judge you first where you are. Yeah, people, people, have, have people just think that everybody just came out of that. That's nonsense. There are people who have a track record with God. My friend, I will pray with you. I'm stretching my hands on you, but the person who is falling is here on this road. Look at this mystery. Can you imagine that? Now, let me pray for you. In Jesus' name, step into a new season, a new season of grace. May God help you. May God strengthen you. Let grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The main reason why one of you, I don't know which of you now, Adekunle that came, is the Lord is visiting your family. God is bringing an end to activities of witchcraft. Right now I decree and declare that one person, may the power of God come upon you and bring this, this ordeal to an end right now. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. He says that at the name of Jesus, that every knee must bow. Hear me. When the season of appearance comes, let me tell you what happens. God himself will sound a trumpet from the realm of the spirit. And in a strange way, doors will begin to open that even you cannot control. That's why you find out from nowhere a season just opens and it looks like certain individuals are just known everywhere. There is a track record with God that brought them to that point. Territories just begin to open for you. You have entered that season of manifestation. I wish I had time. I would have taught you four things that you must do to step in and maintain those seasons i already sense the water steering and i may not want to delay us so that i can finish and also catch up with my own flight but this is very very important maybe i should give you two will that be fine for all of you who came may the lord bless you in the name of jesus when we start praying we'll bring people out in the name of jesus christ the power of God is coming on a lady called Grace. Grace. One grace. I can imagine that there are many grace. But the power of God is coming on a lady called Grace. Please help them. Eh? Okay, so let's, let's... John chapter 2 from verse 3 and 4. John chapter 2, 3 and 4. Jesus himself knew that... If you try to manifest prematurely, you will have bought seasons. Can I tell you, there are times the devil will try to open doors for you 
that are not supposed to be open based on the season you're in you must sustain the discipline to still wait even though those doors are open jesus said to her this was the wedding in cana of galilee woman what have i to do with thee he's speaking to his mother now he said my hour is not yet come in other words my time of showing forth is there i only came to honor a feast don't make me do things that are outside of the script of my destiny there were many invitations i remember those times that would come because people were seeing the little grace largely to minister to youth fellowships and all of that and then god will prohibit me and till today there is no ministration that i honor without praying about it believe me I, I stand before god to tell you it's a practice that i started because i found out that there were that those constraints i will never forget a meeting i was to go for in kaduna th that time and they had prepared it was about one hour to just rush and go there i was taking my bath when the lord spoke to me and said i will not go for that meeting i said oh god these people have prepared and they were good people sincere believers I said, how do I tell these people now? I had to call two of my people to say, please, can you go and stand in for me and help explain to these people? I, I did it. They were going to be heartbroken. They had done their best, stretched their resources, gave assurance. Some even mocked them and said, this guy will not come. And yet, painfully so, when I was speaking with them, with all due respect, they were saying, yes, but please, is there something? Did we do something wrong? I said, no. The season of appearing. Let me tell you two things very quickly that you must do. Number one, when you get to your season of manifestation, you must build a system for your continuous spiritual growth, even though you are in your season of manifestation. Most people lose out the moment they step into their season of manifestation they do not last because there is such a demand upon your grace a season of manifestation can be as a man of god now you are doing well branches all over the world and the demands you would turn into an administrator and no longer a man of god the, the early church faced this when expansion began to come after persecution many things were happening trouble started coming that had to do with welfare the delivery of food god was adding daily as many that were saved when you read acts chapter, acts chapter 6 the full text is from verse 1 to 4 but let's look at 3 and 4 there was it was a very serious problem the disciples started having problems he said wherefore brethren look ye among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. Everybody say this business. There is a kind of business that can distract you. It is not this evil. It is something that a business is meant for profit. So what you are doing is for profit. Yet it sustains the power to distract you. I can tell you today. And most men of God will not admit it. But it takes an extra effort to create time. And get the kind of spiritual richness you would have gotten 10 15 years ago any sincere man of God will tell you no matter how disciplined it costs as it comes at a cost are we together verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually somebody say continually don't say you gave yourself before we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word that's what we gave ourselves to that brought us thus far we will not allow this business to now distract us there are many people whose spiritual lives went down as the ministry went up there are many people whose spiritual lives went down as their finances went up there are people whose spiritual lives went down as their children were growing. The demands of life have legitimate grounds to prey upon your time. You will have to make a conscious effort. I made it as a point of duty to create systems for my spiritual growth. 
systems for retreat because you see you can rise to a point where it will take the ministry of fathers and mentors and maybe some of your contemporaries who you are close to to be able to tell you when there are times of adjustment you can be so great that people will even be afraid to say ah i noticed there's pride growing in you they don't want trouble because god has lifted you and honored you let me tell you if you do not sustain the intelligence to supervise yourself you will crash as fast as you rose season of manifestation your times of prayer your times of study you will have several sermons do you know almost every man of God here can tell you you can close your Bible for one full year and still be preaching especially when you are around a lot of ignorant spiritual believers one verse is more than enough you can do justice on it for one hour doesn't matter what you are saying people just say amen to everything and there's not birian mentality is not there and people can clap for you whereas it is you and god that knows that 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 secret place is not there again you see let me tell you the devil does not attack you when you are going down he will leave you to go down enough and then one day he will strike you from nowhere nobody rises from nowhere and nobody falls from nowhere when you get to your season of manifestation as much as the world is having a demand on your grace spiritually intellectually etc you must create times with God and go back to him again and say Lord your boy is here from where you found me I am still there build me make me have moments of retreats where you can shut down people have vacations but they don't have retreats I respect both but in order of priority it is better to not have a vacation and have a retreat with God where God marks your script and gives you an honest assessment about yourself watch this area lust is growing here watch this area pride is growing here watch this area and attack your discernment is going down take some time of prayer to build and you come out of that season like an eagle ready for a new season for some of you maybe you have gotten to your season of manifestation and the wear and tear of ministry or greatness is affecting you let me recommend a formula for you go for a retreat fast hallelujah number two the second thing that you must do during your season of manifestation raise men raise men don't focus on enjoying and celebrating your victories. Raise men. When you get to your season of manifestation, raise men. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. You must raise men. The men you raise are the ones who will preserve your vision. The, the men you raise are the ones who will protect you. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, it says the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We are gathered today as proof that the, the founders and the, the foundational pillars of this ministry were, were intentional about raising men. As I sat down there and I heard Pastor Dele talking about the, the, the VHF center, I was so touched. He didn't have to do it. You see, if you don't think generational, you will not last. Whether you are born again or not, if you don't think generational, you will not last. Because we come from a background of deprivation, especially in Africa. The moment we attain any level of success, we sit down on it and forget that time passes. May I recommend that you listen to my message, The Law of Seasons. Please, if you can find it, you can go on our YouTube page and just get it and listen to it. How to maximize life. I unraveled in that teaching the mystery of Pharaoh's dream. Seven years of plenty and seven years of nothingness. Every man's life will have those circles. Imagine 
if Pastor Dele, Pastor Shola, and all the leaders did not commit, raise and commit it to faithful men, I presume, respectfully speaking, that there probably were many other fellowships within that time. With all due respect, some of them have died and edged through history. You must think transgenerational. Let me tell you something about the season of manifestation. The spotlight can be so much on you, you will forget that today will pass. What you call yesterday was once today. What you call yesterday was once future. Next week, relative to next week, today will be yesterday. Relative to next year, today will be the past. Don't celebrate today more than necessary. Focus on tomorrow. Raise men. Can I tell you, if you raise men and you don't raise physical structures, you did not fail. If you raise physical structures and you don't raise men, very soon those physical structures will become factories. Are we together? The secret of sustainable impact is not to be impactful yourself, but to raise men. The men you raise will protect your focus. The men that you raise will protect your focus. When Jesus came, he knew that he had a small timeline. Look at him. Do you know he was about doing all his evangelism? And Jesus was more focused in his conferences and his mentorship sessions than he was even displaying his power and all of that. Go and look at the ratio of his crusades to the ratio of the personal times he had with the disciples. To the point that when he resurrected, you would think he would quickly do one more crusade before he would run. As soon as he resurrected, it was not a crusade he was looking for. I thought a crusade would be the most logical thing to do. Now that you've risen, you gather people and say, I am risen. He called the disciples 40 more days. There are still things have not finished with you. Let's get back to work. When he was done, he said, now I'm good to go. I am sure of what I have put. Wait 10 more days. There is one who is coming. And look at the efficiency of his mentorship. Listen. Do not think people will keep clapping for you indefinitely, no matter how consistent you are in your exploit. A time will come, it is those who you raise that will continue the applause for you. Woe betides a man who stands alone in destiny, no matter how successful you are. For some of you, you are campus presidents now, 400 level, 300 level. You are not thinking succession. You are just happy because you are the one who God is using in the campus. First, I congratulate you for loving God. Second, I warn you, whether you like it or not, you have one more year or two more years. They teach in agriculture that one of the ways you preserve an ecosystem is that for every one tree you pluck, you plant, is it two or three? You plant two. It's a powerful principle. Let me tell you why many campuses have gone down spiritually. Because when the devil knows that there is a set that has vibrant people in every campus I know, there will always be a set that has vibrant people, fiery people. Satan distracts them in their own success and they forget they are soon going to graduate so you find out that a time will come all the spiritual people across the campus just goes within a period of one or two years and they will all hand over to administrators who are not sensitive at all that becomes the decadence spiritually the structure may still be there do you know how the Sanhedrin council started read your bible the, what you later would call the, the Sanhedrin is started with the outpouring of the Spirit upon Moses on 70 elders so that they will help to do the work of deaconry. That was what degraded to that which was there when Jesus came. Something that started with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit ended up as a monument that fought God when he came. Please listen, we're about to pray. You must create a system within this fellowship and every other fellowship. Even if it means to look for two or three people and begin to help them and train them. Leave all those papa papa things and settle down and build people. Are we together now?
I mean, I'm a this and that and that. No, don't, don't allow that deception. Accept you are young and you are growing. Serve God as he's granted you grace and make a mark. Gentlemen, I have one more year leaving this campus. Let me teach you a few things. Let me show you what made me disciplined. Let me show you what made me pray. Let me take you to the place I used to pray. And you start praying with three or four of them and teach them. If you don't teach people things and you let them learn on their own, you will have imbalances. Rebels, people who are anointed, you will have people who are anointed with no character, you will have those who have character and no anointing, you will have those who are administrators but not spiritual people, you will have all kinds of things. The key is to mentor people methodically. Let me challenge this fellowship and every other fellowship as much as God grants you grace. If you can capture even within a manual, a program, that helps for your succession it will preserve this fellowship for the next 25 years not from a religious standpoint but have a manual that helps whoever is the existing president to now mentor and guide the other people it was written so that it will not be mismanaged and so that error will not come in that's why it was written respect anything that is written in fact anything serious is only serious because it is written you cannot tamper with what is written easily. Are we together? I've studied institutions and one of the ways that they preserve their values is to have the, their entire creed and what they stand for captured in writing so that there are no assumptions. There is nobody who becomes a director or a manager in a firm and chooses how he wants to run it. No. You first have a skeletal structure. You can improve on it with innovation and research and development. But foundationally, there is something that guides you. So when you see KFC or you see um, Chicken Republic, for instance, in Ibadan, it looks like Chicken Republic in Lagos because there is a common code. You have to maintain quality. If not, this set will produce something you don't understand. Next set will produce fire and power. Then another set will produce all kinds of things. Campus fellowship, fellowship presidents that are here, please hear me. Focus on raising men more than celebrating your success. Focus on raising men more than making a name for yourself. If you never make a name for yourself and you raise men, those men will force your relevance to remain. Are we together? Raise men. This was a key that God gave me years ago. When you raise men, the men will raise the structures. But when you raise structures, there will be no men to maintain it, especially when you are not there. Many structures today do not have people. Do you know, respectfully speaking, there are many men of God today who are afraid of death. Not because they are going to hell. They are afraid of death because there is no structure at all. In fact, once they are not within their environment for one month. You know there was a problem like that even with Moses. Moses went for 90 days. 90 days. Without him. And he returned back and saw something that surprised him. The gold and the silver that was supposed to be used to build God a temple. Those guys had made an idol and they forced Aaron. Say this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. Raise men. Not just a man. Raise men. One man can fail. But multitudes will not easily fail. Raise men. Raise men. Raise men. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Why did I call it an impartation meeting? An impartation meeting is not just about falling down and standing up. One of the ways that God preserves his program is by introducing graces. Everybody you see commands the exploits that they command. Number one, because of their knowledge of God. Number two, their level of word-based transformation. And then number three, the kind of grace that they sustain upon their lives. It takes more than knowledge, believe me. The power of God must be invested upon your life 
for you to be able to do anything much how shall these things be seen that i know not a man he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you not the information from the scribes and the pharisees the power of the highest is what makes certain things happen in every campus there are traces of cultism especially in our world today and in the campuses today there are all kinds of things people coming with all kinds of demonic things it is going to take more than counseling and advice to maintain the purity and the power the purity of God within a campus you need the power of God say unto God how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power Satan will fight your academics Satan will fight everything while you are serving God so that you will be discouraged and you will leave God you need listen it takes power to stay and power to remain hallelujah you I you are called the premier university maintain that not only academically but spiritually that the make up your mind if you are a student here listen to me that the fan the fire of revival will not die not when you are here for some of you you need to resume prayers not just blind fanatism that does not lead to results that's not what i'm talking about i understand that in every campus you will find exaggerations and blind fanatism that does not sustain within it the power to produce any effect this is not what i'm advocating however fire is never silent uh -uh. put a container and close close that container and let fire be burning sooner or later you'll know something is happening inside if it does not melt it it will be too hot it will change the color it there has to be that effect fire cannot be burning within you and then you contain and say let's just do it quietly no we cannot but speak we cannot but speak that is what is in the don't allow sinners let me tell you the truth you must begin to pray as your new intakes are coming don't wait till they come let your prayer and fasting begin the lord as they step their feet here that revival fire those are the next presidents the next apostles and the prophets make sure that you pray and then lead them to christ all this issue of saying i don't want to be a i i don't want to look like i'm a i'm, I'm too fanatical as a christian and all of that no no if you are for jesus christ you must stand for him completely there is no such thing as half your, your leg in the kingdom and then half outside uh -uh. i said before you life and death blessing and cursing now i'm going to pray for you that that grace and that anointing will come upon you that will engulf this campus whether you are a student uh, this is not just for you I alone it also extends their ministers of the gospel some of you are pastors across the city let me give you one word of caution look up please let me give you one word of caution never fight yourselves campus fellowships let me repeat it never fight yourselves whether you are right or wrong you will not win it, this this has been tested through many 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 decades you do not fight other people and win that is not your assignment let me repeat it again it is true that there are diversities of campuses across every university or any structure and all of them are loyal to the tenants of their denomination and here and there there might, there might be differences and sometimes in fact many times excesses i understand there are arrogant people I understand there are people with all kinds of character challenges I understand there are people who will not be open to superior dimensions of truth I understand however it is still not enough reason you're a campus president here please hear it as a word from God do not pride in saying you are fighting people number two do not make the mistake of believing you are the only one or your fellowship is the only one God is using on campus that is already an attack by Satan are we together god is too loving to ignore everybody and come to you alone the moment you think you are the only one doing it right don't make the mistake of elijah elijah said i am the only one 
so in as much as we honor the lord and we thank god for vhf it is important to understand that there are other silent people not even fellowships there may be people who are individuals they may never pastor a fellowship but they are mighty people like Anna the prophetess, like Simeon the prophet. They will come quietly. They may never be called pastor or president. And yet there is much that God is doing with them. Are we together now? Yes. Fight anything that brings division. Respect one another. Respect the boundary. Keep your core values as far as your campus or whatever, the, as far as you have received from your fathers. But make sure you do not become an advocate. Don't stand on stage and insult people and insult other campuses. Uh -uh. If you have a problem with a particular believer, maybe a senior person, a president somewhere, approach the person and discuss it with the person. Don't come and tear down and make it look like, no, don't do that. Bring maturity to godliness. Are we together? Don't rejoice when you hear that someone's canopy went down. Someone's keyboard has spoiled. You say, you see, that's it. Somebody died somewhere. Don't do that. At the end of it, it does not bring victory. Let me warn again. Do not think you are the only one God is using. Elijah already made that mistake. There are 7,000 others who have not bowed to bear. You are not the only one. And everybody you think has a problem, let me tell you the truth. God knows the problem within his body and he's still working on it. So the moment you carry a perfection mentality, already know that it's an attack on you. Because only God will assess us and show who is truly, truly blameless and who is not. The indices of men might not do justice. So you be careful. Don't just judge people randomly. Don't do that. Love the brethren. You hear that this campus is having a program or this, you can carry your 10,000 and say, can you use it and buy chairs? It is my contribution. Even if I don't come, let the Lord be glorified. Let sinners be saved. If you think something is wrong with them, pray for them where you are and say, Lord, open their eyes to see better. This is what I've been trying to tell them. There is a more excellent way of attaining the unity of faith. Hallelujah. And let me tell you this, if you are a campus fellowship president or you are a leader and your life is not right, don't laugh about it and say it does not matter. Be careful the things you listen to. Don't ship nonsense that will come and destroy your life. Nobody is too big to repent. Humble yourself and throw away all that campus president thing that has destroyed people. Go for a retreat and cry unto the God of heaven. Show me mercy and help me. I'm too young to destroy a great destiny. Are we together now? Don't bring that I am all right mentality whereas something is wrong. Be very sincere with yourself and trust God to work on you. Are you ready to pray? Father, I am available. Use me for the revival that is going to be birthed upon this campus or wherever it is that you are connecting from. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Shalabaka te brandege balato siabata. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Lord, there are many who have gone before me. You use them greatly. May I be part of your program. May I be part of history for righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I do the impartation, let me make an altar call. You are here and you need Jesus genuinely. You know from the depth of your heart that you want to have a, 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 a new start. Or you are here and you are saying, I love Jesus, but sincerely, 
my life has gone haywire and I don't want to tell myself lies. I want to start afresh. We have just two minutes for you. I'm going to count one to five. Please make sure you understand what you are doing. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. I'm going to ask you to come and stand in front here as I count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus here. One. Two. If you're not interested, you can sit back, but you need Jesus. You are tired of playing games with your spiritual life. This is about my destiny. God used people 25 years ago. I want him to cleanse me. I want to start this faith life genuinely. Come. Don't say, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed, I'm afraid. I'm a president on my campus and all of that. Just, just leave all those things and come before the Lord and let him help you. If you're coming, come quickly so that we'll pray. Hallelujah. There is no such thing as I don't know if I'm saved or not. Uh-uh. It's like saying I'm not sure if I'm a man or I'm a woman. Forget all the nonsense you see in the society. God created everybody, created everybody to know. If you are saved, you will know you are saved. If you are not saved, you know you are not saved. You look at your life and look at everything. You know you need Jesus. If this is all I do, then I consider myself to have done a good job coming here. Salvation is very important. This is not the issue of an evangelist's proposition. Ye must be born again. There are many people who are leaders over campuses. There are many people who are leaders around. Workers in church and campus, they are not saved. My dear people, I salute you for the courage to come and stand before Jesus. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't want you to come and stand here just like you are reciting a poem. I also don't want you to stand here feeling condemned as if you are the worst sinner. No. Jesus is love and when he comes to you in as much as he does not condone sin I want you to know that he stands reaching out to you there is nobody who came to him who he drove away that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal may I request please that you raise your right hand high above your head high above your head as a sign of surrender and I want you to say this after me loud and clear let it be from the depth of your heart convincingly say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, have heard your word. I have heard your word I need you, I need you. In, my in my life I confess, I confess that, you savior, that you are my savior you are my Lord, are my Lord and you are my king, are my king. I, declare I declare that the power, the power of, sin, of sin Satan, Satan hell, hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever I am a child of God I am saved washed by the blood of the Lamb I receive eternal life into my spirit I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for drawing these ones to yourself the Bible declares that everyone who comes to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare that the power of God will rest upon you. As you have declared, the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. You are recipients of eternal life and you walk in righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Someone direct me. Okay. Who is there wave your hand so they see that you are there okay follow this gentleman okay this lady too can they follow either here or there okay so all of you please follow these people as they clap for you they will take you and have a word with you 
very quickly and then you'll be back can we celebrate them thank you keep clapping please celebrate them please celebrate them keep clapping until they go those leading them help them very quickly all right while they are going we'll pray one prayer so that i just do the impartation and then we're done i'm sure that in the remaining sessions you have to take the time to minister healing and do some other things but i'll just focus on the impartation that something will come upon your life and will change your destiny are you ready to pray father the grace i need for my destiny let it come upon my life go ahead and pray please pray please pray the grace required The grace required. Shabakata palanda bradege de belados. For some of you, it's a grace for prayer and supplication. For some of you, it's the spirit of revelation. Some of you is the grace for visibility and acceptance. For some is the grace for favor. For some is the grace for speed. One more minute, you are praying. Hala shabra de gebaratos kadelas, embra kata bakata broska de belekete bosh, shabra nda gebarata kata broska delens. Embra teke la kato shala kaprande ge balado ziata. For others is multiplication of grace. For some is the grace for the prophetic. Hallelujah. Now please look up. I'm about to pray for you. Whether you are an usher or not, please do me a favor all those under the anointing just bring them out as we pray so that we will not waste time are we together i'm going to pray for you the power of god will come upon you and it will be the beginning of a new season now i'm praying for people here there are people who are called into the prophetic i stretch my hands anyone here who is called into that dimension right now may the fire of god come upon you please bring them out in the name of jesus take that grace now take that grace right now help them please whether you are an usher or not help them take that grace i release that mantle that anointing let fire be ignited from within your spirit new dimensions may your eyes be open may your ears be open to hear and to see in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare the grace for speed is coming on someone. Every delay on your life, that mantle of speed. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Delay in your academics. Delay in your spiritual life. Delay in your family. I place this mantle upon you. In the name of Jesus, go and succeed. Go and succeed. Go and succeed. I decree and declare the grace for revelation, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Ay, 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 ay. It's coming on someone. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Receive that mantle. Let the Bible be open for you. Understand doctrine with balance and precision. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. No limitation in understanding. The fortitude for comprehension. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus. 
Are you ready for the healing anointing? May the healing anointing like a man to return to this campus. I release that grace and imagine men of fire, women of fire, go and heal the sick. The borers arise, Esther's arise, Gideon's arise, Elijah's arise. I decree and declare by the spirit of grace, go and heal the sick, go and deliver the oppressed. In the name of Jesus Christ, hear me. Every altar that speaks against you, that you don't do well academically, or you don't do well in destiny, regardless your efforts, Bakadosh Kadia, I stand upon every grace here and I decree and declare be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross i advocate your deliverance now hear me everything you have lost i don't know what it is that has left you but i place a mantle upon you receive restoration for some of you your spiritual life has gone down. The way you were is not how you are now. Receive that grace to be restored. Now hear me. I decree and declare the mantle for prophetic intercession. The grace to pray and pray through in the name of Jesus. The grace that men like, like Apostle Babalola carried upon your own ground may that grace rest upon you take that grace for prayer 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 may your campus become a place of fire may your campus become a place of excellence may your campus become a place of revival hear me by extension we bring before the lord the entire city of ibadan father in the name of jesus let revival fire fall again let revival fire fall again let it not be that when the fathers are gone that god will no longer have men i am praying again revival fire fall again in the name of jesus let me pray for you anyone here who has overstayed and there are altars holding you down i will not let you go i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic I declare your exodus now. I declare a pathetos kedabata. I declare your exodus now. Your season of transition has come. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer. The kind of favor that you have not encountered some of you are here supporting yourselves some of you even as students you are supporting your family members some of you are here walking within the city of Ibada and it looks like things are not working well in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead the anointing that came upon Esther that took her from Shushan to the palace. May that grace come upon you. I call forth your destiny help us. I prophesy to the north, the south, the east, and the west of Ibadan. May they locate you. May they find you. May they bless you. May they locate you. May they find you. May they bless you. May they locate you. May they find you. And may they bless you. I pray for every fellowship upon this campus 
in the name of Jesus may the Lord empower you to be beacons of light if there's any occultic society occultism in this campus we bring it to an end now now listen in one minute pray for VHF fellowship please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute we have prayed for everybody but pray for VHF all of you who are in front here in the name of Jesus that which you have received is perfected by the spirit of the living God please pray for VHF in one minute father let the next 25 years be moments of impact moments of fire pray for your founding fathers that God will preserve them pray for the founding fathers that God will increase them pray for the founding fathers that God will keep them to see the next 25 years if Christ tarries and pray concerning the center the retreat center Lord in the name of Jesus we decree and declare even by the power of the Holy Spirit that the resources to purchase that center to renovate it is gotten and that it truly will be a place that will make men again now hear me all those who are part of this fellowship even though we have prayed for everybody but I stand upon the grace that is on your founding fathers whatever kept them for these 25 years with fire and relevance may that same grace come upon you whatever they escaped will not destroy you every battle they fought you will not fight it again in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we pray for your Senate we pray for all of the lecturers across the university and I stand in partnership with you as touching Asu and every other university father by your mercy may their request be granted and may schools resume in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ and though it may look like you are behind schedule but in the name of Jesus God will find a way of fast forwarding your destiny for in Jesus name we pray can you give Jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah so please one last time let me encourage you by the message of God love Jesus with all your heart be men and women of character serve him with all that you have and live your life make your contribution and your mark while on campus and trust God for an excelling destiny and for all the men and the women of God I know that uh, there are a lot of people here who are not students people who came within the city and it's only fair that at least we speak a word I know that there are pastors here who had churches there are pastors here who had ministries may the Lord bless you for coming and I stand in faith with you in the name of Jesus for every church every pastor dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskate bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke nekata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.